Well, hello model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rel, and this week I'm going to show you my finished Porsche 911 slant nose turbo here. This is from Testers, and it's a kit I built a long time ago as a kid and uh, picked uh, um, another one up, or I should say more of a teenager, you know, 13, 14, whenever it was that I actually built it. But this is from like 88, so I was in eighth grade at the time. Um, but yeah, this is one that uh, I reminisced about and decided that uh, I was playing with it a little bit here and there and was working on it. But I didn't know a whole lot about these cars. Um, to me, it was just a cool looking car and a cool looking model. And um, I found the testers kits to be a bit of a challenge as I never really seen anything like that. Really enjoyed doing them, and uh, but the, my original builds didn't survive. Couldn't really tell you why, what I did with them. I do know that the whale tail ended up on another model kit, and uh, I've shown that Mercury on the channel, um, and some of the other parts that uh, came from it, because I believe these mirrors uh, made that car as well. You know, I, just, just some of the parts that had survived or went to other projects, as, you know, I beat them up, trashed them, played with them, and destroyed them. But uh, that's kind of what happened to... to um, the one I built of this a long time ago. But I thought the exotic cars were really cool, and it was just all really about the looks, the racy looks and everything. Even though I didn't know much about the car, um, I've done some reading on them and kind of enjoyed doing the research on them because, like I said, didn't know much about them. But when it came to these slant noses, I had uh, checked out two books from the library on Porsches. And while I, I found it interesting, especially their early history and... Uh, what Fernand Porsche was up to and how he got started and and the 356s uh, pre-A and then the 356 A, B, and C and some of those differences as I have some of those kits. And then, uh, you know, when the 911s came out in 67 and that uh, was pretty much the first uh, all Porsche with uh, no VW parts in it, uh, it was kind of interesting to read about some of that stuff. So, and these 911s, I always thought these were cool, even though this really isn't a 911, even though Tester says that on the box. Um, and finding out more about these cars. Now this one, it's an 87 to 89. And, um, you know, with this particular conversion, and it's one of the, the, the most popular of uh, the slant noses. But I guess the slant nose conversion was started by the aftermarket to make them a bit more racier and look somewhat like their race cars. And some of the earliest ones were fiberglass and Porsche wouldn't warranty them or anything like that. But I guess uh, their particular works department started doing some of their own officially in 82 on top of the Porsche. So they would custom make the front end for you. And uh, But it was expensive. I mean, I was reading a couple of different numbers and nothing really um, solid on it, but you know, even the tester's box says it was 28000 for the conversion. I read somewhere else it was uh, 23000 Um, And another site was talking about how they were $50,000 for the conversion. But the early conversions, the first batches, or first batch, which was like 82, 83, somewhere right around there, um, they were pulled off the assembly line and the conversion was done after the fact. And... I read somewhere that those were like 50,000. Those may have been the first ones, but they didn't have any pop-up headlights or any of this. The front end was just flat, and then they had different front bumpers, and they used the square headlights and different configurations. They were all pretty much custom-made and done to um, the country of origin's rules and whatnot on, on what applies. And then the second batch was the same way, um, which was later done um, like 84. 485, somewhere right around there. Oh, in the first batch, there was something like 58 cars. Uh, no your U.S. cars. The second batch was something like 208 or 209 cars. Those had pop-up headlights, but they didn't have these gills up here. And um, that's when the boxed quarters or rockers appeared, whereas in that batch. And then the cooler vents here would appear. So some of the ones that are on this particular version started to appear by that time. But this one represents an 87 to 89, which is by far the most popular ones. 
um, as it was said that was 686 were done. Um, and interestingly, most of them, 630 of them, were U.S. market cars. They all went to the U.S. 56 of them, well, I guess 50 went to uh, Europe and six went elsewhere. Um, but those were like 20-something thousand dollars. So the U.S. ones are very common. So if you see, you see one, this is the one you're going to see. And the biggest distinction there is um, the vents up here. Uh, the front bumpers are a little different because I guess the U.S. cars, depending on the state, were not allowed to have the oil cooler in the front. So they would have them in one of these vents here. So there's a number of differences. And I found that kind of interesting because I decided since I built my other 911 um, turbo that was not a slant nose as a U.S. spec, I decided to do this one as a Euro spec. So I put the amber turn signals in the back, the Euro plates on it, and... Uh, also on this one, I put the Euro um, side marker lights right there. And we're just kind of going for that look. But then to find out of the 680, only about 50 of them were Euro models. So I found that interesting. And I didn't cut the hood open on this one to expose the frunk and all the stuff in there. So I had a lot of fun building this one. And I had a couple of challenges. But before we do that, let's take it outside and see how she looks in the sun. Well, here we are out in the sun with the Porsche 930 Slant Nose Turbo here. Our tester's box says 911. But um, love this paint, this Mazda Soul Red from Scale Finishes. It's uh, more of a maroon burgundy in the shade, but um, when the sun hits it, it really pops. Um, and I just really like it. So I picked up this color just to see how it was and decided I was going to use it on this car as I really didn't have a car for that color, but uh, really liking my decision here. And uh, she looks great. But yeah, you can see when it uh, shades, it, especially under that uh, whale tail wing right there, you can't even see the turbo on there. Um, just shading it really good, or at least I can. Maybe the camera's picking it up. Maybe you guys will see it, but man, does this thing look good. Really happy with the way this one came out here, even though I did the Euro version, which those are very rare, but uh, you know, this was a fun build. Took my time on it, just wasn't in a hurry. This wasn't one of my main focus builds, I just kind of did it as I was working on other builds and you know, needed something to dry or sit or wait, and then that's what the, this one was kind of something to build when you know, in my modeling time when I, other things were taking up the time so like how this looks, man. All right, we'll go back inside. All right, I hope it now looked really good, but when it comes to building this, this was, um, it really wasn't that difficult, especially after doing the other one, so I didn't find it as challenging. Um, the motor is still like, you know, like 50 parts or something like that. But the biggest surprise, and I did a video on it, was uh, this um, whale tail. The one I had was mismolded and shrunk, so this grill would not fit. And um, so I had to take one from my parts kit. So thankfully I had a parts kit and put it on there. Um, so that kind of slowed me down. But it gave me time to do some of the detail here, like the black down here, um, painting the wheels and just finishing this one up, but taking it a little bit slowly. And I went with the brown interior. But um, this one, I'll take the... Uh, engine lid off here because this thing it falls off really easy and it's also kind of awkward because the wiper glues to it um so it kind of makes it interesting but you know I, I love the way this thing looks i always thought this whale tail was really cool and it's got the turbo sticker in there um hard to see with this paint and everything but we'll put that aside but the motor came out uh, beautiful it's really no different than the other one. So I got the motor in there and you can hardly see anything. All of those parts, you can hardly see anything, but it's all on the underside there and all of those parts and getting all of these exhaust parts to line up and then getting them through the bumper, even the factory cars, you know, that seems to be an issue, but getting all that to line up, um, but came out great. I'm really happy with the way this thing fits. And then this uh, really dark color and those um, grills right there. And then uh, hand painting the trim. That one I actually did mask off, but brush paint is still. 
and all the black trim and the interior on that. So the seats and everything just look awesome. Kind of like I went with a two-tone uh, on that one, seeing some like that. So I had some fun doing this one. Now this color, this is uh, scale finishes, but it's Mazda Soul Red. And I, I just really saw that color and I wanted to try it on this particular build. So I went ahead and went for it on this one. And uh, these wheels are poseable and everything. But um, so I went for it on this one just to see what this color is gonna look like. And I love the way it looks. It's really dark. It's like a blood clot red. I um, think it's really cool. So really stands out nice on this one. And an unusual color, like most of these I see were, you know, white, red, or silver. But, um, you know, I did see a couple that were kind of a dark maroon, which is what kind of got me into, let's do this one like that. And just had a really good time uh, with it. And it was just fun to work on and slowly, you know, get done as, as I, you know, did other projects, but squeeze time in with this one. Mainly when something else was... Um, drying or something else going on or maybe I was spraying that color because I did this interior when I did my Ferrari Daytona Miami Vice interior so I kind of did both of them at the same time um, the body I just wanted to see what this color would look like and that's kind of what brought this one on and to keep building it but you know, fun kit to build and a bit of a challenge so you know I found it challenging way back then still kind of challenging now but you know after building the other one um, this one was much easier because I knew what to expect, even though my pillars were kind of warped and twisted, and which is a common problem with these. seems to happen to a lot of them. But I really enjoyed building this one. I'm kind of curious what you guys are going to think of it as my newer cars and exotics don't pull the uh, the counts and the, the views that others do. But uh, my, it, my channel is called Muscle Car Modeler, so what do I expect anyway? So you guys... Uh, Thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and all your comments and everything. I really do appreciate it, you guys. And you have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next time.